Because DC, man, let me tell you something. DC, their problems are their own. Like, yes. they're not giving Henry Cavill the respect. And uh, Ezra Miller completely fucked off them giving him the torch. Man. And Wonder Woman 2 was trash. So hopefully Wonder Woman 3 will be incredible. And they still bullshit on the Green Lantern series, but they want to give every fucking villain a spinoff, which is ridiculous. Oh, speak, speaking of which, I know this is going to be very <laughs> dramatic. Fuck you, CW. Fuck you in your assholes. Fuck Bro. you for Man. so many reasons. How the hell you gonna give us John Diggle all these years to be Green Lantern and he I say no and throw the shit? You can kiss my left testicle. <laughs> oh my god, you bullshitting for what uh. you do in the iris, man. Y'all need to stop doing this shit to Candace Pat, man. We already know how y'all are. Stop that. Fuck y'all because she carries that show, and then man. two. Yeah. I am sick of y'all not showing the flash because that whole new season was trash, but that la- that season finale was hard. I'm yo, y'all need to get it together, man. Mm-hmm. Stop doing this to us or just get rid of the show. Like get rid of DC and let somebody else take it. Here's what I what I read the other day about them doing season nine. They said, Yeah, we're gonna do season nine, and the flash will appear in 15 episodes. I yo. said, How the fuck? Can you do a show called The Flash and The Flash only appears in 15 of the 22? Bro, come Thorn on, man. is gone. Thawne is gone. Like, your main character is gone. Like, again, so I didn't, we didn't throw spoils in there. Thawn, all Thawns have been erased from yeah. existence now. He, it's old. Yeah. The Thawne reverse Flash chapter is closed. Yep. What's next for him, man? I I know what's in it. I forgot the it's a it's another speedster. It's a it's a fought that nigga for ten years. That's funny. Yeah, it's a whole different speedster, and I I, I know what's coming. But it's just like, yeah, I, I like I said, I really wish CT would continue watching because I oh no, there was there was so much I wanted to complain to him about because I knew that he was in it at first. And I then, stopped <laughs> on season eight premiere, like the minute that I finished the premiere. Because here's the thing, bro. I understand filler television. I get it, but when you do a season premiere. Of the Flash, and the Flash isn't in it. And at the very end of the episode, you show him opening his eyes. I was like, "What the fuck is this, nigga?" I stopped watching at that moment. And this, this is me. I have suffered through shows. You understand me? I have watched. You're talking to somebody who grew up watching Cleopatra 2020 on the WB Sunday nights. (laughs) Hey, not too much on that. Not too much on Cleopatra 2020. Right. I watched everything and suffered. I've only walked out of one movie in my entire life, and that was 98 weeks later, the zombie joint. Uh, oh, yeah, 28 weeks later. 28, 28 weeks 28 later. That's the only later. movie I've ever walked out of. So I suffer. And for me to have left on the Flash season one premiere, I mean, season eight premiere, shows you how bullshit this show has become. Yeah. Yeah. The show, the, the show, yeah, that show is a, a train wreck. Through and through, I don't. I don't know what's going on. It's like I, I again. I still suffer through it. I watched. It I did too. I did like, too. I, I get it. But it's just like at the same time, it's like it's the same thing with like like we said before. We get back into Marvel. It's same thing with Team Arrow. You're giving us characters <laughs> we, we don't want to see spinoffs for. We don't want to see them getting even full episodes. It's like give me the Flash. Give me interacting with him and this team, and keep it going until. And you don't even need a big team. Like you, you survive so many seasons with just him and his core group of people, and he's the only one with superpowers. And then you gave vibe powers, and I loved it. Then you took them away, and it's like ah. And then you had uh, Wills. I loved them. Then you took them. Like, these actors yeah. end up wanting to move on to be out of their contracts. I'll raise you this. It satisfies me when creators of shows do spinoffs for characters that don't deserve spinoffs and the spinoffs <laughs> fail. I'm not an evil person. But when that Arrow <laughs> spinoff and they tried to give his daughter a show, I mm. said, please, God, don't let this bullshit show get episodes. And it did not. Because mm. I don't want to see this... This is my biggest problem with the way that they write for women. I love strong women. That's why I loved Wonder Woman 1. Because it was like, oh my God, they didn't pander to, I am a woman and I'm strong. They just wrote an incredible character. With the way that a lot of the CW does their shows, especially with the character of Oliver Queen's daughter, is they wrote her like she was him, but a girl. And it was 
it was it was trash because they're trying to force it down your throats like huh this is okay if i'm a man so i'm gonna do it as a woman and it's not okay because those aren't the same impacts give yeah. us her make her likable they never made her likable they made her have a redeeming quality of oh i want to save my brother yeah. but there was no likability and for a show to survive you have to like the lead character the CW has that bad because they try to do that with uh, Supernatural. No, com completely different universe. But remember, they was trying to do the. Uh, well, I forgot the, what they the, called it. It was the, it was it was the three girls. So yeah, it was the like three, the three three random chicks that these <laughs> dudes have passed by. Yeah in the season they felt like they could keep bringing back like one of them was like the dude cashier that he the body he took over yep. was one of the, well, he had a daughter and then that daughter became basically a hunter and stuff and then but it was just like okay that's cool but dude this is supernatural i don't need no spinoff for them like yo i'm focused on these two winchester boys and when is this stuff going now y'all ended it in great fashion but it's mm -hmm. like bringing them in and then now the fact they're doing a prequel with the mother and father and like how they meet and stuff and it's just like okay but when they were adults they didn't know none of this so how does he how do they dad know this now and they're like oh well maybe because like something happened and he don't he don't remember none of the shit i'm like it all goes back to what Dion said. I think Dion had the perfect. Like, we're going to get him back to Marvel, get him back to it. It's like they do something to completion, and they're like, hey, keep on going, keep on keep going. On. They, they're like, uh, uh, okay. I already left uh, the stage. Get your character. ass yeah. on the stage. <laughs> the Winchesters. <laughs> right. <laughs> What's the uh, deal with yeah, the Winchesters? Yeah. Like, Bro, Kevin Feige is amazing, but I'll tell you something that Dion and I talked about when we, uh, when we left the theater. Did you notice on the screen it said oh. a Kevin Feige production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he been doing now, that for the last couple films. But peep, he didn't do that for any of the other phases. Mm -hmm. Okay, no. So no. this is showing you just like when we saw Spider Man and it said uh, Amy Pascal production. Yep. It was like okay, so we're now and we've been hearing rumblings that DC has been trying to court Kevin Feige, which he could completely save us. Is what we oh, hope. Man, listen, I would love for him to say, you know what? Let's run it back with a different with a different franchise and, and he could fix it but at the same time maybe he couldn't because when we we thought that with joss whedon with justice league uh well, after well, snyder I, I left i never i never thought that with josh whedon i never thought that yeah, I, I was know. i wasn't on board with josh whedon. <laughs> i saw the first avengers and i was like when i saw cap suit i was like mm, okay but i get yeah. it like, all right but uh um, I, like, I, I i went to the conspiracy theory bag i was like when they got josh whedon i was like did he intentionally fuck up the franchise because like uh, he was working as, as a sleeper agent? That, that, that's what did, I. That's where my brain went. I was like, oh, he was a sleeper agent. Yeah, like, fuck this shit move, up real quick. That movie <laughs> made no type of connections whatsoever. But the Kevin Feige thing would be great for DC, and then two, it makes sense because Kevin Feige still stands behind James Gunn, and James Gunn is now starting to move that make that move over there, yep. working with Peacemaker and doing some other stuff. So it's just like, yo, I can see Kevin Feige Productions taking on DC, especially with this new company that owns DC now, and then wanting to move into a new direction. They so, like Superman, which I love. They're like, yo, yeah. we like Superman. They've been leaning so heavily on Batman. Man yeah. for the last however many years he's like i'm a superman fan so we will be getting a superman movie and i'm like thank god In wait wait comments. what's new what's what's new what's coming out next for the rest um, of the year wakanda forever ever yeah when is that november so we don't have another thing until november no oh uh, yeah we not, no we still have she hulk get the fuck out okay so like i said we only have something until november in november yeah um, this nigga trip this man said she hulk and Morbius Two is in pre-production. Oh, Morbius. <laughs> <laughs> Morbius was so bad. I'm looking at everybody involved with the side eye. Like Wait, you when, said, we, yes. When I, that's why I put it in the group chat. When I was like, when they re-released it in the yeah. theater, I was like, I point. know CT probably was like, nigga, eighty thousand dollars. Oh, How I did Jared Leto fail twice? On no, see, and that's the thing. He didn't. It's the people that wrote it. So that's what I want to know, too. Just like, man, like behind the great roles, man. So that's the thing. Like, which role do you think DC or Marvel that he can do that's going to redeem him? Kind of like, uh, oh, boy, Isaac as mm -hmm. Apocalypse to Moon Knight or Ryan Reynolds from Green Lantern to Deadpool to Deadpool. He ruined it. I mean, he can go mm -hmm. to Disney Marvel. <laughs> they, ain't, they ain't got him on air. Disney but. Marvel. Because he's on Sony Marvel. He is. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think because I don't know a lot of great Marvel characters, but if I'm thinking DC for Jared Leto to play, 
you know what? Because he's also funny. He might be a great plastic man. Um, he could be a great plastic man. He could also, uh, he may give him a calendar man or something. <laughs> he made that too dramatic, but for it that we're like, we can't even put this in the movie. Yeah, I say plastic man from DC for him, or he could play Vandal Savage. A different take on Vandal, but definitely. Yo, hey, hey, but the, but the mindset there, yeah, he could pull off the mindset of being here for so long and such. Why, 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 why we can't give him Gambit? He can do a great ass uh, southern accent. All right, man. Thanks for having All us. Right. Will. It's always a pleasure, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just recording off. Have you yeah. seen Gambit with his long hair? Just because just because you got long hair. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know what? Wait a minute. Let me not let me not dismiss this just a second. Because you know what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of Gambit Tall and stuff. We think in live action, Jared Leto could pull off Gambit. I don't want that to be the first choice, Mm. but he could pull off Gambit. I ain't talking about the one when his hair is pulled up and his hair coming off like this. Yeah, and he got that headgear on. Like he he got the jacket on. Like if he was to do like how he's with like his storyline, like he comes from that that family of thieves, and you show that, yeah, Jerry could pull that off to show mm. Gambit's no, backstory I, before he joined uh the. He has a great New Orleans accent. I seen nah. him in the movie with it. Shave his head, let him be Victor Sass. You're yeah, you're giving it. villains. We're talking about redeeming oh, him as a hero. Oh, in, yeah, no, 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 just no, no, I can't see him as a hero no more. I can't. See, uh, he has to be a villain. I can't see him as a, as a hero. He wasn't bad as Joker. That was cutting room floor shit. Like that yeah, was, that was. wasn't his fault. So I'll defend him on Joker. But yeah. Morbius also <laughs> wasn't his fault. But it was like he just keeps being a victim of these bad edits, bro. Yeah, he's the he most just... victimized edit actor he don't in want the to world. Do nothing with superheroes ever again. Yeah, he's like, you know what? Fuck it. I wouldn't blame him though. Like it's like, yo, like, cause again, no, like he it. even played Morbius good. Like, like from the ones I seen in the cartoon, I was like, yo, this is a good Morbius. The this problem is, it shouldn't be a movie. Like, here's the thing: it's movie. not. And I want to make this clear for the people who are watching: it's not the fault of the actor for booking a job. No, it's the fault of the studio for green lighting these villain films because they want to see the same success DC saw with Joker, which also shouldn't have been made, no matter how good you like it. The Joker should not have been given his own movie without having a Batman counterpart because there were so many holes in it. I will say that, but I will also say if you're going to do villain movies Mm -hmm. or anything like that, they need to be a new take on it. Yes, I don't need you yeah. to connect it to like any yeah, of the, yeah, like the DCU or the MCU. Like even for me, like just as like how we do Phantom Fiction and CT, you know, you, I have you and Dion on that soon. Like I want to make something for the symbiotes, but it mm. didn't have Venom or any in there. It's just the world of the symbiote. So pretty much the symbiote latches on to this uh, baby that's dying and pretty much every piece of his like mone- uh, molecular symbiote has to keep him alive. So pretty much that baby don't have a soul. That's him. So he breaks mm. this form that Null has been trying to do, which is basically attaching symbiotes to humans permanently. Mm. And so he actually did it by mistake. And then that's what makes him a threat. And you see these symbiotes coming. But one of his powers is he can't fully turn into a body. It can just be like these things because he hasn't fully accessed it. But again, Mm. this is telling it from a different story of like, okay, I'm not looking for Venom. I'm not looking for Spider-Man. I'll learn about where these symbiotes really come from. Yeah, and stuff, and so it's like if you have your take on that and you spin it different, I don't mind a villain thing. But when you yeah. want to try to connect it with this Spider Man and just like how Morbius bringing in, you know, Vulture, and it's like, yeah. how did Vulture get here? Yeah. Why is Vulture still here? If everybody else went back, how did he not go back? And it's like, mm-hmm. ah. because it doesn't things that just don't match up, bro. Like when you do the the stories with the villains. And all you have in common for this villain is that hero. It doesn't make sense. At least with certain, like that's what I keep doing. Batman's Rogue Gallery, mm. uh, having solo films because these people have been flushed out and they have actual identities and they have a life without Batman. I get it, but when it comes to all these other villains, we have so many heroes that haven't been getting their own films and TV shows that you need to do that before you try to make a redeeming quality for a villain. I mm-hmm. give you a pass on Peacemaker, but that's where the buck stops, bro. Yeah. Give and us the, the heroes. But the biggest, the only, and I think too, like what they're trying to ca- uh, keep 
like capitalizing on with that is Harley Quinn. And Mm -hmm. one of the things that I did notice though about DC and, you know, like, you know, it could be an argument for it is that there is no big recognizable woman character outside of Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. The next one is Harley Quinn. Like, you know, you can name everybody else, but like, as far as like, when you think of DC women, you're not going to think Black Canary. You're not going to think Vixen. You're like, you're going to think of rogues first. You go Poison Ivy and stuff Are you like ready? That. You ready for this? I'm glad you said that. When you think of DC, yes. This is a yes and for Will Ferrell's point. You do think of Harley Quinn. You think of Wonder Woman. However, just like with the Avengers, my first thought wasn't Iron Man. My first thought was the Hulk. Yep, but yeah. if you go back and look at the cartoon Iron Man from the 90s, he's nothing like Robert Downey Jr. portrayed him. Mm-hmm. But Robert Downey Jr. portrayed him to a point to where now everybody's like, oh, shit, I like that take on yep. Iron Man. So yeah. it's no different than what you could do for DC. If you were to if you were to raise the level of a Poison Ivy, if you were to do a, a show or a movie for Power Girl or yep. make Supergirl super charismatic and likable, you could overpower her uh, likability for Superman if you do it correctly. You can do yeah. the same thing for Vixen. You can do the same thing for um, Hawk Girl. Because the only uh, iteration we have for Hawk Girl was from the Justice League animated show where she was like more military and didn't have a personality until oh. season three. And then she was a black woman. And you're like, oh, I like her now. And then uh, DC Legends of Tomorrow. And uh, D- well, we don't, we don't, hey, we don't hey, need hey, to talk about that. Because <laughs> yeah. she barely stayed in there. That was Yeah, that was trash. Me. See, and oh, here's the funny thing. I'm Legends sorry. of Tomorrow, before you said that, Legends of Tomorrow was so trash. Season one turned out to be the best of it. Go ahead. Yes, it did. <laughs> y- y'all ask what's, what's, up, what's coming up next. Of course, Marvel, but oh, don't forget about um, Black Adam and Shazam is coming out this year. When is Black Adam coming out? I think so. When is Shazam is coming out this year? Yeah. When did, when I didn't did know there was another Shazam. Are you sure is? Shazam is coming out this year? Uh, okay, the way y'all saying it like that, let's know that I might be wrong. Man, how you not no, pull up not- facts? No, nah, because I know it's like the Revenge of the Gods. and stuff. Oh, October 21st for uh, Black Adam. Okay. okay. Um, because I just Shazam. seen the uh, the trailer for Shazam. Man, oh, it was released. Uh, it was like the behind the scenes. Oh like, shit! Yeah, the December twenty first. It is. Yeah. It is coming. Oh, out it's year. coming out two oh. months after Black Adam. Yeah. So that means that Black Adam got to really set it up. They time yeah. together. I don't know if it is though. Is it? see that's not, see man these see, see then, then that's if they don't that's a see that it's shit like that that that'll <laughs> piss me off like that. because I'll be like wait how, how? no so, so what well, the only thing is Shazam so Shazam got to match now Black Adam's environment because like if you watch Shazam Shazam look like a Disney original very movie colorful. I know yeah well, and it's I'm like saying. but like if 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 you give us Black Adam, and then two months later, you saying a Shazam's coming out, and there's no tie-in. I'm gonna be pissed. Are you ready for this? <laughs> I hope they recast that boy in Shazam because he was damn near an adult in Shazam one. <laughs> <laughs> so we know yeah. Billy Batson is supposed to be a child, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and if this not. motherfucker is super yeah. tall again, I don't know what the purpose <laughs> of having Shazam would be. <laughs> Put him in the wheelchair. Oh, 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 matter of fact, they gonna have to recast everything because if they're doing the Shazam family, they all also grown. Megan Good is a grown ass woman. <laughs> like, but she's well, an that, adult. That's the Avatar. That's yeah, that's the that. Avatar. Yeah, he talk, oh, yeah, so right, talking. Right, about the, right. like the little girl with the glasses. Like she should be like what probably seventeen now. So she she's on This Is Us. She's definitely yeah. taller. And yeah, you gotta right, remember, man, like, four years ago, right? Exactly. They yeah, shot right, it four right. years ago, and we had that pandemic, and the year after that. So it's like. Ooh. It's been a while because yeah. they just got done with reshoots for uh Black Adam and yeah, The Rock really. is hella grown, so it's like I don't know what they're gonna do with them kids if yeah. they didn't recast them already. What they gonna do with them kids? What they gonna yeah, do with them the kids? Because the thing is, too, it's just like, are they gonna fight? Like, that's my whole thing. Like, Black Adam don't like Shazam, but how it's set up for him to not like Shazam is two different things, so it's just like, where how are y'all finna tie this in? Because you just made Black Adam an anti hero, which yeah, kind of exactly. is like. Okay, Ridiculous. so who is Shazam's villain? Yeah. If anything, I the thought it Rock should have played Green Lantern. They should have made him John Stewart. I know he wanted to play Black Adam, but it's like make him John Stewart, so that way we could have finally been getting a Green Lantern movie, and he's so physically imposing, it would have made sense. 
Yep. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna lie, I would have loved him as a Green Lantern. I don't mm-hmm. know if I'd have wanted him as John Seward. I think the one Who that would you want? Zach, the one that Zack Snyder showed as Green Lantern, I thought would have been great. Uh I well, can't remember his name at the time, but I know he played uh Nat Turner and stuff. Um he I like no, seeing he him. He can play Nat Turner. Who is who is that? I, I, they do no no you're right because they to me yeah. they kind of look alike, but it, no, yeah. it is a different person. No, yeah, I don't know what that dude played in, but I was like, yeah, he's he looked like a new face. Yeah, no, but he he's been in some things. I just can't place it. But uh, I would have loved to see the Rock as a lantern and stuff like that. Because like you, you said, make that nigga kill a wall. Who you make that nigga to? No, like uh, <laughs> no. Nah, to be honest with you, I don't know who I. I'd have made him one of the fear lanterns. Oh, but still villain. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get him hero status, baby. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, hero status? Nah, nah, nah. He needs something better than Green Lantern. He needs something better than Green Lantern. Like Black nice Adam is beneath him, in my opinion. It's the it Rock. I, He's I one agree. of the biggest it stars is. in the world. Yeah, they, He's they, too they charismatic. That's the thing. It's like, bro, you the rock, bro. Like he's way too charismatic. The guy that you was talking about, uh, Will Ferrell, is um Wayne Wayne T. Carr. That's, that's it. Who, yep, that's who that's who played him in the Snyder uh, cut. So yeah. what has he been in? Oh, I didn't look at I didn't look that far. <laughs> Y'all niggas ain't doing research right, man. This nigga Dion come in. Yeah, two movies coming out. Okay, cool. When they coming out? Oh, let me look. Hold on. Hold this nigga say, yes, Wayne T. Carr. He's actually from the Carr family. His uh, father His uh, runs father a church. Is, uh, okay, cool. What was he in? Oh, I don't know that. Nigga, uh, what, what is he doing? It's not, a, it's not a lot of stuff. Like, I remember him as SWAT. He was in uh, SWAT. At one point, he the TV show or the movie, the TV show. Um, oh. he was in Chicago Med, uh, Stupid Cupid, and then Who's Afraid of Big Bad Wolf. Oh. Wait, Gatorade. is this him? It's that's what I well, that's that's what screen that's what the screen junkie said. <laughs> so I went off of that. Oh, no, 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 uh. it did say no, no, it's right here. Okay, bottom. I was gonna say, hey, hey, no, hey. no, it's at the bottom. A light cast. <laughs> so actually, no, I'll take this back because this is not the person I'm thinking of still. So no, I wouldn't have cast this person. Yeah, I, this ain't in the y'all no, like this ain't even who I thought it was. So no, I wouldn't have cast him as that. Oh, you know, this is a fun, this is a funny thing I'm gonna say about that. About um the Snyder verse. <laughs> My good friend hits me up. She says, Yo, if you tell anybody I said this, I'm gonna deny it. <laughs> but Martian Manhunter was in three movies and didn't do a goddamn thing to help. And I was like, what? No, she was like, he was in the Snyder cut, which he was revealed to be the uh, the Martian Manhunter. But he was in Man of Steel, didn't help. He was also in Batman versus Superman, didn't help. And then he was in Justice League and didn't help. And I was like, oh, you're absolutely nothing. right. He do nothing. Well, nothing. Is, he, is, he, is he? Has he always been that impersonation of him? He no, they revealed him to be yeah. the Martian Manhunter. Well, in yeah, and then, in the Justice comic League. book, that general, like he he was supposed like again too, like based off of the comic, like he died a couple of like decades back, and then he took him over, and oh, then wow. has been in okay. that system for the entire time. So that's always been how Martian Manhunter stayed around everything. But just like he said. He didn't do nothing. Them yeah. Kryptons came, fucked Earth up, and he just sat there like, so mm-hmm. you know you're not supposed to be here. You know you're not supposed to be here either. You know but That would have been a perfect time. Like, here's the thing that I do love about Marvel, and Marvel has run this into the ground, but they keep doing it. They have a white lead and a black sidekick. Yep. Okay? They started with Iron Man, Terrence Howard, and Robert Downey, then it became Don Cheadle. You look at Thor, it was Idris Elba as Heimdall and Thor's white. And then you look at um Captain America. Captain yeah. America and, and um uh Anthony Mackey. So and now even you got Thor and you got Valkyrie, right? Yeah. So DC needs that. So when you look at these people and you like, bro, just give this dude a black sidekick and make this movie make some money. Yeah, that's about even Captain Marvel, huh? Even Captain oh, Marvel. Captain Marvel was uh, exactly Michelle yep. Rambeau. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And here's, here's what you said that out loud, though. This is what you've put in effect. Yep. Kevin Hart is going to be in a DC film. Oh, yeah. man. That's <laughs> coming. It's coming. Who, can, it's who, coming. who could he possibly play in I'm the DC? The Mad Hatter. Hatter. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do Kevin like that. Kevin could definitely be a hero because you got to understand. He could. I think yeah. Kevin might be. How tall is Robert Downey Jr. or D- Tom Cruise? Is he around their height? Because if he is, a they can just short, give him a lists. little short. Yeah, a little short. Well, I'm not yeah. talking about height. I'm just saying, like, what character would he be able to? Like, I can't see him being a character. 
Well, I understand could, this. I could. I could. Well, look, he's he's gotta, gotta, in these movies, though. I'm not saying he can't do it, but they don't really go with comedians when it comes to movies. Well, the movies. most comedic, uh, the most comedic superhero we've had is Paul Rudd as Ant Man. But my point is, Kevin Hart. If you look at the uh, the series True Story on Netflix, yeah. oh no, I'm, he, I'm up with that. His I'm dramatic scared. acting, and he's got some dramatic roles under yeah. his belt to show you yeah. he's got the goods, so, and he's solid as a rock. So, so it's he's not, it's not anything to his his acting. Like if if he yeah. can do the role, it's I'm people being able to, think, to see him as a, like what character would he play? Like you know, like like okay, like I'm just trying to. I can't think of a character that I that I that I'm like. Oh, he would kill that role. Hey man, they are gonna make him Aqualad. That's hilarious. Uh, I don't have an answer for that because I, I haven't I thought have about it. I don't have one either. Yeah, I don't have one either. But I could also see him voicing one that's like virtual too, like like oh, like a Bradley Cooper type. Yeah, yeah like, that I, I can see, see him doing something. Oh, like yeah. That too. Okay. Matter of fact. Okay. Yeah. That that opens up a whole lot more. Yeah. Yeah. If he could do the voice um, for any. Actually, character. you know what? What? Because you threw it out there before, I could see him be an elongated man. Oh, okay. I could see him be long, elongated man, or um, if depending on like again, if you really want to go into the future with it, mm -hmm. um, he could be Jor El yep. and be a uh, uh, Zod's son from the future. You know what? He could. I'll also I'll raise you this. If we're doing voices, he could be Red Tornado. He could also be um. Yep, yep. I like yep. Red Tornado. You know what I mean? Red Tornado would be a good one. But when you do the voice thing, he could do so many. Uh, I, is there some of you he could be? Yeah. Oh, you know what? Depending on how if if they if they change up, you know, like we don't we haven't had it, but he can be um, he can be speedy. He can be he can be Red Arrow because it's like you got to think like one, just uh, not necessarily the main hero, but this hero and like I said with his acting chops that he did um um on that movie in netflix like just being able to have that trauma that you went through like trying to find your identity being the booster psychic. gold booster gold would booster be dope gold. but you know that and because that would work with his comedy mm -hmm. yeah that would yeah. be great matter of fact oh. it would with him like that one in the booster beat the hero and one in the yep. beat the star like, yep it would um oh no 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 they already know they popped him everybody because i was gonna oh. say another one he could have done um that he could have made stand out jimmy olsen I want him to be a hero. Yeah, I, want, I, see what I don't want him to be a side character. Be like a when you look at the Marvel movies, like I love Matt Damon's cameo and recurring role on <laughs> in Thor. <laughs> but I I'm getting tired of the cameos where we don't really use them. Like Matt Damon is a bona fide action star. Uh Melissa McCarthy right. is a bona fide star. Yeah. I get the cameos, but I was to be honest, I got cameoed out um with Austin Powers too. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Austin Powers yeah. 2 had so many cameos, it took away from the movie. Yeah. Damn, it's hard, it's hard to think of one for like DC that he could I do know. that I'm thinking because the only thing I'm thinking of Who? N no, the dang, they just cast him. Dang it. Who? I was going to say he could be Ray Palmer. He would have uh, made a great Adam, but I think they cast him already. It is? He would have been a great Adam. I think they well, I think it did. Well, who was that was in, in, the in Black Adam? Who the Asian Black guy. Adam? Oh, I don't know. I haven't seen the trailer. No, that's the second rendition of him. So that's the second rendition of the Adam. Oh, you're talking about the original. Oh, yeah, they the cast original him? Adam. I think they did. No, that's not Ted Court. I'm tripping. I'm thinking no, no, about Ray uh, Ray Blue Ray Beetle. Was the original one. Yeah, yeah. Ray uh, but I don't know. But I thought I saw him in uh, Black Adam's trailer. I thought I don't know who that is running like massively in that scene and stuff. I know CT, you haven't done it, so I'm more referring it to Deuce, but yeah. the one that was in red and blue when he was running like this and stuff like that. I got I, 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 I didn't break down the trailer yet. I got I got to go back. Here's the weird thing: haven't seen the trailer, but for what you just said, one spoiler. But for also, it's like if this is Black Adam, he's in the past. I thought. Don't tell me if I'm wrong, but when they when I saw Black Adam, I'm like. Okay, so he's in the past. This is ancient times. So how the fuck would the Adam be in ancient times? Just I, I'm not giving nothing away from the trailer. All right, so cool. I will I will say this: they haven't given us one what timeline this is in, two no. what time this is set, three what planet we're on. <laughs> so I don't even what know what planet Earth. we're on. Yeah, I'm to be honest with you, I don't, don't know, know what Earth or not. Yeah. So it's like. 
I don't know. They didn't give us a lot. So I will say about that, they didn't give us a lot except we know who's going to be in it, like, you know, the characters that he announced. But they yeah. haven't really given us any real story on what we're about to get with yeah. Black Adam. And I'm pretty All sure right. the, the second trailers and stuff they do, but like I, so you don't watch any trailers. I only watched the first initial trailer, and I don't watch any more. And so yeah, where where we're at, I don't know if the other trailers addressed it, but I only watched the first one, and they didn't give us nothing. It's a love, like for example. Yeah, it's a love. You're right. Everybody who knows me knows I love the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Yes. So it's like you find somebody that loves them. And that can truly tell you how a story should be told and what the people want to see compared to somebody that's like, oh, yeah, I used to work at uh, A&E and now I'm going to work at Marvel for the next 10 years. Like he doesn't love these characters. Yeah. But if he's like, yo, I grew up watching Superman and I think he deserves a video game. He deserves uh, a better movie. And we need to have some more stuff where he's crossing over because he's the leader of the Justice League. Well, he's not the leader. Batman is. But you get what I'm saying. So it's like somebody who knows the the history right. of these yeah. franchises. You right. sacrifice your whole career to produce the next wave of Power Rangers CG? Without a shadow of a doubt. For so me... Yo, I need you not to do no more comedy, no more sketches. I need, I want you, I'm giving you all the power to produce the next wave of Power Rangers. C I've T already signed my contract. CT could retire after that. <laughs> hey, CT like, yo, that's you got to remember too. Like, he if he was in charge of that, he only got to really worry about getting domestic box office to go see it. International going to yeah. see Power. They're going to see it, bro. Listen, yeah. I, like, I don't, I don't, I try not to bother y'all for too much stuff. If CT was to get that, I would, I would like, hey, do you need a janitor? I'll be the janitor. Like, just <laughs> let me be a part of it because here's the funny CT thing: love for it. I'm right there with him, and so I'm it's like, right let me be anything with it. I don't. I listen. I'll listen. I'll just. I'll type up everything you say, like thing. whatever you need. You definitely need that. So <laughs> here's the thing: the rocks on these, on these, on this background for you. So <laughs> Power Morphicon is next month. I'm moderating some panels, and uh, I'm just gonna be there, of course, because I need to get some more Megazords for the old shelf in the back. But beyond that, it's like I was having a conversation with one of the originals. And we were talking about the 30-year reunion. And let me tell you something. I spoke for the fans when I said what needs to be shown and who needs to be a part of it. And I also said the two Rangers that have issues with each other need to put their bullshit to the side yes. and do this shit for the fans. Don't do it for the money. Do it for the franchise that has afforded you the love and the fanfare over the last 30 years and um we'll see what happens but my point is power rangers to me much like marvel and dc and any other thing that people are into impacted me as a child right mm -hmm. so it's not about just the money for me because the times i've went and moderated in the past it's been for free because this is something i love mm -hmm. so it's like when you see these franchises what they do for children and this is to touch on something that Dion said earlier i'm so glad that i saw power rangers when I did, because if I saw anything else, children are sponges. You're going to pick up something that you mm -hmm. see that blows your mind the first time. So I'm glad I saw Power Rangers and didn't see Minister Society first, because what about <laughs> I saw Minister Society first and wanted to just be a thug or grab or, guns? Or, and do or, something. or you just be like the next John Singleton. Like, again, like you can still be in that same aspect, but yeah. now you're John Singleton making you never know. movies. Tell but, the stories of the hood, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So science fiction was the thing that got me. And it was like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. Then it teaches you the things like teamwork and it teaches you the things of don't be a bully. And it teaches you the things mm -hmm. of always just use your words before you try to harm somebody. Like yeah. all these things that are great life lessons. What that, went wrong with the movie that just came huh? out? Well, what went wrong with the Power Ranger movie? Oh, I'll tell you, the thing that was wrong, several things, but the first thing that's on top of my list, they had a character called Goldar. Goldar is one of Rita Repulsa's uh, original man. minions, right? It's like her right-hand man, like her general. Goldar in the series had a very raspy, spongy, uh, Power Rangers, that guy, right? Yep. In the movie, he couldn't speak. Uh, they made him nonverbal. That's the number one issue. Number two, they never showed the Power Rangers teleporting. Mm -mm. They showed them basically about to get into a car accident, and then the next day they woke up in their beds. They were like, how did we get here? And it's like, come on, man. Like, if I didn't know what happened, as a casual viewer, I wouldn't know what happened. So that yeah. thing, that thing, they also took way too long 
to get them in their zords and show them all suited up yep. like the entire movie was like a training montage instead of like if you look at episode one of power rangers which is only 30 minutes yep they showed them getting their powers in the first 10 minutes and they're fighting yep. before that they're fighting and then it gets too much for them and they say yo we got to try these powers out and then they morph and then now we're in the megazord right after that it's like this is what this is what it's about. So the yeah. movie took way too long. They also teased something that never happened in the movie, which was Jason and Kimberly kissing. Mm -hmm. And then at the very end of the movie, they're gonna say, "Yeah, well, uh, all right, we got another, we got another student in class, Tommy, Tommy Oliver, to try and get you to be like, please give us a sequel and we'll show you this." <laughs> like, no, you should have showed us some shit this first movie, and then the next movie, like at the at the very end, this is what should have, this is what the Power Rangers movie should have been. I'm not going to talk about the whole film, but the very end of the movie should have been them beating Rita Repulsa and her saying <laughs> disappearing and I've been like, what was that? Anyway, we won, guys. And then out of nowhere, somebody just started beating the shit out of them. And they're like, what the fuck? We just won a battle. Yeah. And they just show a Green Ranger. Yep. And then yep. the movie goes to black. That's what should have happened. Yeah, because the, the tone of that movie was dope. Like how yeah. they showed Angel yeah. Grove and all of that stuff. That was great. Even Zordon, I was cool with how Zordon became Zordon. I and love him like, being a Power Ranger. We never saw yeah, that yeah. before. Yeah, yeah. Right. I like I like that. Even Sean Rita was a Power Ranger at one yeah. point. I was like, yeah. oh, I, I, yeah, that's what they dope. with the lore was like, okay, this yeah. is like, like I was hyped about that, but like, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, First 10 he, minutes was fire. Yeah, yeah, but that was the thing. It was like, there was no, because the thing was, it was like, there wasn't a big enough threat just yet. Like, they didn't let Rita pop off fast enough. No. Like Rita didn't like, and then, then too, like he said, like Goldar was an element, like he wasn't even a real person. Right. Like, it was just like, it was just like, yo, like y'all didn't have us read, like, and then too, it was just like, when did she get Goldar? Because if right. she died when that happened, yeah. when did she get this minion? And here's when the did thing. she learn all of this? Let me give you this. So this is why Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie in 1995, Ooh was brilliant so yeah, ivan ooze was an original character that they had never shown on the tv show and didn't even mm -hmm. mention since but they yeah. showed his minions them tango warriors on the show yep. which is another thing <laughs> but when you watch the movie they showed ivan ooze or they showed him um being unlocked perfectly you get these yep. construction workers they're digging some stuff up because they're trying to build something and then they come across this egg and it's like what the fuck is this egg yeah get well, open it up a motherfucker touches it it opens up. Ivan Ooze comes out. Now he's about to go and get his machines that he had uh, eons ago, and he's going to get his revenge by putting everybody under his control. Yep. This is great because now the Power Rangers have to stop him. Mm -hmm. Rita should have only been coming after Zordon because right. she's like, yo. And also, what were Rita and Zordon fighting before they start fighting? Like, there right. had to be a reason that they were... Like, these are yeah. things that the director completely played himself on and his name is dean israelite and when i saw his name being mentioned with the rangers i'm like oh my goodness he's about to fuck this movie up and i was right the well, actors did their you jobs can't do that, CT. you can't you can't compare these two movies together because the first one was already set up they didn't have to have an origin story it was kind of like they just dove right in of how they they were already power rangers that's not true the original uh -huh. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie gave yeah. you an origin story because they mm -hmm. they wrote it for the casual viewer. So right when the movie starts, it came on like Star Wars, and they told you who Zordon was and yeah. why mm -hmm. there were well, Power Rangers. Cheating, dude. It's not cheating. Well, no, I swear well, no, it's, it, no, it's not because even so, like with the regular Power Rangers, like even this new one, yeah. you still had that aspect. Like again, was it was like you were trying to set up what Power Rangers are and yeah. you didn't do that. Like yeah. the thing was, right. like he said, like if Rita was here, Rita should have been only searching for oh. Zordon. Yeah. She should have not been trying to search to make a gold stab, none of this shit. Like no. she mm -hmm. ate from Earth. Yeah. So it's like, yo, like how does she like, yo, I should be going to attack you. Now that I've attacked you and now that I've knocked your systems out, you can't contact your rangers. Now let me see what this planet is about. 
Mm-hmm. And now I'm finna start taking this stuff over. So now, now they you got these Power you. Rangers, they gotta stop you. And it's into that. It was the whole thing of like, oh, we gotta blend together to become to be yeah. friends. Man, we didn't give a fuck about that because then nah. nobody cared that Zach and Tommy yeah. and yeah. Jason were already friends and how they became friends. Yeah. We didn't care yeah. about none of that. And, and it was that. dope. Go ahead, Deuce. I was just gonna say that you know, like they always say what makes a great like hero's movie is the villain, and because of what Will and CT said, like the the original movie the way that they did ivan ooze and the way that they made his like said his story his drive and even like the climax of it of like his like um his beast that he used and everything like it was a great story for ivan ooze and that was an original character so yeah you you were able to get origins there is there with that as well Mm -hmm. so when you see in dion this is specifically for you specifically for you (laughs) the mighty Morphin power rangers the movie show these origins because they couldn't depend on just the fans coming to see this movie. They mm-hmm. wanted something bright and colorful that even the parents who were sitting in this movie understood what is happening and why they are. Mm-hmm. So after they described what Power Rangers are and why they were chosen, the next scene, these motherfuckers were in an airplane. And what they were like, oh, these are the kids they talk about. It was the coldest. You got bro. teenagers skydiving, which is illegal. But it's like, you yeah. show that. And I was like, this is incredible. So they did the exact same thing for that, just so you know. We didn't even care that the Yellow Ranger was black. Did not. We we didn't yeah. say nothing. We, we had a whole new watch. Red Ranger. That was a transition, right? We had a yeah, whole new Red Ranger. A whole new Red Ranger was whole in there. Like, that's Ranger. when they changed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah, it was yeah, like, well, we it's funny. Asian Black Ranger. We was like, hmm, that's when it happened. Ranger? They, uh, the Power Rangers, Walter Manuel Jones, Austin St. John, and uh, Tweet Trang they were let go of the show and recast uh, with those other three. And it was only, I believe, they had only done a week or three weeks of episodes before the movie came out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so it was like it was I extremely forgot. fast transition. Yeah, because yeah. I forgot Aisha, the, the chick Aisha that was in there. Yep. She was in a few episodes, and I was like, "Yo!" And I kept thinking it was after the movie came out, but it did introduce her in there already. But it's just like, "Yo!" Like you said, it came out so fast. Yeah, they didn't link the two, but for what you had said, it was like, "Yo, we're trying to make this for a wider audience." Yep. So it was like, "Yo, here it is. This is where we at. Let's mm-hmm. start." That's what they should have done for the, pre- the 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 previous one that just dropped. Facts. But it made it seem like the dude that made it was not a fan of power rangers and that's the thing and that's what this one goes back to marvel and dc and all these franchises like even transformers you have to have people that are a part of something that love and are knowledgeable yes. about the uh about the product yes you wanted to make money but that that it will make money if it's accurate is yes. what I'm trying to say. So when you see a, a Ninja Turtles movie, that's also something that I was passionate about before Power Rangers. Yeah. It's like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You're like, all right, yeah. The movies as a kid, you know, the first one with Vanilla Ice, fire. Mm. Mm. Then you look at the remakes a couple years back, and you're like, I hated those. I hated every bit of them. I was so excited when they announced we're gonna get a Bebop and Rocksteady, and I was like. Until you saw Bebop or Rocksteady. When I when I saw when they was like Crane is coming, I was like, <laughs> and then Crane, Crane came and I was like, Yeah, yeah. Hey, where that big starfish looking dude at? Why he but that right Splinter there? and and Shredder fight was fire though. Yeah, that was fire. Yeah, I mean they and they had they see like get like into like visually it was cool, but then too also this is something even going back to CT's thing, seeing trailers and things coming out before they drop. Which will ruin it because I never forget what ruined Ninja Turtles for me was when someone did a Photoshop version of them without a nose, like the original looking ones, if they were the, for the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And when I saw Michelangelo look like his original, but this new CG version, I was like, this is how y'all should have made them look. Yeah, because I hated how they looked. I hated the character design of the this is an actual turtle, yo. That's how they look. Okay, they look human, but they look like humans. We're already in a realm of ninja turtles. I don't need them to be accurate like a real turtle. (laughs) We are this is we are already in a different world, fam. But you know what happens when you listen to the fans, bro? You end up getting a sequel and you end up making hundreds of millions of dollars, i.e., Sonic. Sonic came out. The, with the uh they showed us what sonic yeah, looked like and people it. trashed them yeah. and they were like no we're not <laughs> buying this and people were like all right well fuck well i guess we'll put some extra millions in it and yeah. push the movie back and i'm glad they did because now they just had their sequel yes and that sequel is fire it was fire, fire. unfortunately 
Chippendales came out before <laughs> Sonic. Yeah. Because let's just be, keep a square square, bro. If Chippendale <laughs> Rescue Rangers would have come out after, after Sonic, yeah. Sonic would have been way higher on the list of making money. But yeah. Chippendale came out first. And I had to say, oh, man, Sonic, y'all out here bullshit, baby. <laughs> Yo, bro, that shit was hilarious. Ooh. The fact that we're bringing him back, man. Make but sure yeah. y'all can watch that episode. We talked about that, too. We talked, oh, yeah, about, we that. Ta we, we talked about that, man. But Damn, you know, Chippendales. Like Thank y'all for checking out another episode of Straight Out of a Comic Book. Please make sure that you comment, subscribe, and turn on the notifications to the channel. So